see you inside your watch. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to uh, follow the same rules as we had uh, initially. I'll just uh, put those back up there for you. And uh, I will ask Dr. Peterson if he would just take a moment to introduce himself, tell us a little bit about himself and uh, his interest in this position. And so we'll start Dr. Peterson with you. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, uh, my name is Val Peterson. I, uh, all my degrees are from Brigham Young University, and then I have a master's degree from the U.S. Army War College. Uh, in strategic studies. I have spent the last 32 years working at Utah Valley University uh, in a variety of different positions. I started out uh, on the public relations, uh, internal communications, external communications, marketing side of the house at Utah Valley. When uh, President Bloomsburg came, he moved me over to the administration side. So for the last 16 years, I've been responsible for uh, the business services, IT, athletics, and uh, facilities, as well as internal audit, general counsel, and uh, emergency preparedness. And so that's been a great experience that I've been able to work in those. Uh, I had a 32-year career in the Utah National Guard, and uh, uh, worked through the ranks there. It was a heavy opportunity to command companies and time and brigade, and then I finally finished up as a, a brigadier general of, of the Army side. And then uh, uh, for the last eight years, I've been in the Utah House of Representatives, and I've uh, uh, been elected in uh, elected office there at the legislature. So as, as far as snow, it's just uh, one of those places that I've had an interest in for a long time. I uh, really like the fact that the personal nature of snow and the way that uh, you have an excellent culture of care and making sure that students are successful. I really truly believe in student success, and uh, I uh, really like as I walk around campus today and talk to people just how concerned everybody is about students and about making sure that those students have a great experience here and are able to graduate and continue on with their dreams and, and their educational pursuits. And so uh, I, uh, when I saw the opportunity for Snow College, I, I wanted to apply and did apply just because of, I really truly believe in the mission that we have here and, and I think this is a, a, a beautiful campus that uh, has a, a uh, faculty and staff that really does care about the student success. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's uh, have our first question. We invite you to come down and to the microphone and uh, please share with us your name and your affiliation with Snow and uh, ask your question. Here we go. Thank you. Dr. Peterson, my name is Jason Springer. I'm the director of the Student Success Center here. Uh, first, let me say thank you for your 32 years of service in the National Guard and the sacrifice that your family took on with you uh, serving in that role. Had, had a long and distinguished career at Utah Valley University. I'm interested to know what your biggest success and biggest failure has been during this distinguished career at Utah Valley and what you learned from each. Okay, so well, let's take my biggest failure, since that's, uh, that's one that uh, we get that out of the way first, and talk about a success, right? End on a success. So uh, I worked at uh, uh, then Utah Valley Community College. I received an assignment to create a, a cultural fair at the, at, the, at the college at the time. Uh, it was supposed to be a, a county-wide uh, uh, fair that we were going to have, and so we spent uh, literally a good year working on it. We had all sorts of groups that we had invited. We had, uh, we had dancers. We had different uh, expos. We had uh, displays. We had cultural groups. And we, we planned for this. And, and we brought all these people together on a day and we advertised it. And of course, this was before you had social media. So we took out advertisements in the paper. We had, we had radio ads. And uh, the day came. And all the people that we had planned to have there came. But nobody else came. And so it was uh, all these people there and nobody to show what they had done. And uh, so I've often thought about that experience. Uh, you know, as much as we plan and we do things, we've got to make sure that we have buy-in from a larger community than just ourselves. And so that, that was some of the things that I learned from that. It's something that I continue to, to reflect on at different times about how we can, can make sure that our events are successful if we're reaching out to the community in different groups. 
As far as uh, successes, uh, one of my uh, one of my biggest successes, I think, is uh, was when we were able to get funding for our library at Utah Valley University. I was the legislative liaison there. Uh, we worked very closely with the legislature, and, and uh, the reason that that became so important was is because when we wanted to go for university status, one of the things that we were told was is we had to have a library that would go with the university status. And so. Uh, we work very closely with our legislative delegation, with the administration, and with the commissioner at the time, the commissioner's office, to, to make sure that we could receive the funding there and be able to do it in a timely manner so that then we could then move forward with some other issues that we have, which was the university status for the, for the university. I think the thing that I learned there was just how important collaboration is, how important it is to make sure you bring all those groups together, all the different constituencies you have, and that uh, through bringing those constituencies together that you can have you can have the success that you're looking for. And so, I mean, it's much the same way with anything else that we do is that when you bring the right groups together, get the buy-in that you need, that you can be successful. Great, thank you. Next question. Uh, I guess I didn't get my threat, though. If there's not questions, then I'll just look at that dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. Uh, I'm Dr. Jones, one of the chemistry faculty here, and the question that I have, uh, we're currently facing a budget crisis here at, at Snow College due to lower or declining student enrollment, and there's a lot of talk about strategic enrollment management and what we can do to increase student enrollment. Uh, one of the things that I feel is sadly lacking in this discussion is the problem with faculty retention. Uh, I find if we're going to build a good department and a thriving division, it basically stems off of can we retain the good faculty that we have here on campus. And we're plagued with faculty retention because we are notoriously overworked uh, due to the problem that we can't find adjuncts to cover our excess classes because we don't have, in a rural area, we don't have a highly educated populace to be able to draw from to cover these extra classes. And our compensation package is non-competitive with the four-year universities and with industry. And as a result, we're constantly uh, turning over faculty over and over and over again. And we can't keep cohesive units that we can build and grow off of that foundation. So my question would be, uh, what can you do or what steps can we take in a budget crisis situation to uh, alleviate the problem of overwork and underpaid? Well, obviously, you're talking about a chicken and egg problem. And uh, one of the issues that I noticed as I looked at the, the different statistics for the institution was the fact that we do have a uh, shortfall in enrollment this year, about 2.3% from what I can see. Um, obviously, that causes some problems on the budgeting, and, and, and then, then we have to make up that, that amount of money. One of the, the conversations that I had today was uh, about enrollment management. I know you're looking at uh, having an assistant vice president of enrollment management. But I think one of the things that has to happen here is you, you've really got to get into social media. Uh, social media is going to be a, an avenue for that enrollment growth. Now, conversely, uh, when I was discussing this, I was surprised. I had I had some, a little bit of pushback from a, a person who said, "Well, we don't want to grow from snow too much." And, and I thought, "Well, that's, that's interesting because until you have that enrollment growth, so you can have some of those funds, you can't fix some of the issues you have." Now, you, I, I don't think you're ever going to fix the adjunct faculty issue because. You just like you don't have uh, the crowd, the, the, the metropolitan area, so that you can attract those additional adjunct faculty. And so snow is, is always going to be dependent upon a full-time faculty force just because of the location. And so I do think that uh, an important part of all of this is making sure that you do have some enrollment growth. And I think that uh, in order to do that, you've got to reach out, you've got to show snow from a, a social media perspective. Great, thanks. Next question. Please. Hi, my name is Alan Briggs. I'm the Council State Wellness Director. Uh, my question is, uh, you know, statewide and nationally, there's uh, a lot of mental health concerns for student age pop 
population. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on how to address that. Can you repeat the question to you? I'm not, uh, the sound is a little low. Just for yeah, so the, the, the question is about mental health, mental health on campus, and how, uh, what, what my thoughts are on that, how we would address that. Obviously, uh, this is not just an issue that's uh, tied to some problems. This is an issue that's nationwide right now. Mental health is an issue across the, uh, the entire student population we're talking about. And, and one of the things that the, the legislature has actually done was to provide some money to try to increase the amount of counselors we have. The other thing that's happened is the, the system has added the SAFE-UT app. And uh, that's a, a key piece, I think, for every campus because that allows uh, students to actually reach out to a counselor 24 hours a day, no matter where they are. And so I, I think you've got to implement that as snow. But making sure that you have counselors available and, and uh, and obviously, a, a number of these issues all become monetary, right? So if you're in a budget crunch, that becomes even more difficult. And so, uh, the safe UT app becomes a key component, I think, for Snow College because they can talk to a counselor immediately if they signal that they have a problem and then you can get them into counseling. Thank you. Next question. Hello, I'm Cheryl Bader. I work in foreign languages department. One of the uh, one of the parts of our mission statement says that we support global engagement, the engagement of the faculty, staff, and students. What do you see as the president's role in encouraging global engagement at Snow College? So uh, you know, when I walked through the student center today, I noticed you had all the flags up for all the different countries that uh, are here at uh, Snow College or have been here, and so obviously that's one way you can do that is by. In increasing those amounts of students that have that interaction. The other thing, obviously, is study abroad. Uh, study abroad programs are, are a great way to increase that global engagement uh, for a campus, for those students who want to go out in the summertime and have that kind of an international experience. So I think, you know, from a president's standpoint, this is one of the things I said earlier, you know, the president doesn't have all the answers. And I don't proclaim to have the silver bullet that's going to fix everything on campus. And I, and I, I wouldn't portray that. But I do think presidents uh, bring collaboration together. They bring uh, campus communities together where you can talk about those issues and you can talk about uh, what the concerns are and what the solutions are. And uh, many of you actually probably have a better solution than I have, but you can identify those solutions and you can prioritize them and then you can implement them. And so. Uh, things that seem impossible can become possible as we all work together, and that's a, that's one of the key things that I think is you you know you talk about all these issues that, that uh, you bring forward is that's the reason we have a shared governance model. That's the reason we do uh, discuss these, and you have a cabinet, and you have vice presidents, is to is to look at those problems, to develop solutions, to talk those through, and, and to build a consensus around uh, ways that you can attack those issues and solve them. Thank you. Next question. Yes, please. Hi, uh, I'm Josh Hales. I'm the uh, Director of Human Resources here. I'm also a business community <laughs> member. Um, so my question for you, uh, by the way, I'm also a uh, UVU alum, so. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. I've, I've met several today. Yeah, so um, I, I had a good experience at UVU. Obviously, there's been a lot of growth even the time I was there. Um, you know, the growth at UVU over the last uh, even decade, 15 years, has been tremendous. So how do you envision you know, if you look at the Snow College vision for the next five to 10 years, how, how do you articulate that? And then kind of related to that, how can, how can Snow College um, have, um, basically, how, how can Snow College have um, success without the kind of population growth that, that Utah County has had? Um. So I, I think there's a couple things as I get to Snow College. Uh, obviously, Snow College has already been uh, accredited as a four-year school. We have two four-year degrees here. We have commercial music and we have um, uh, software engineering. Uh, when you look at the system, you look at what the most popular degrees are in the system. There's actually three that stand out on every campus, and that would be education, business, and nursing. And I think that uh, 
I'm not suggesting that Stone College depart from the mission of being a two-year school, but I do think you've got to look at, at the possibility of adding uh, business education and, and at some point maybe nursing. I know the Richfield campus has nursing. Um, I just talked to a couple of students who are doing a prereqs for nursing here. But when you look at rural Utah, and you talk about rural Utah, uh, one of the things that happens is, is once they leave rural Utah and they go to a Utah Valley or they go to the University of Utah, they're probably more than likely not coming back. And so the largest employer you have here is actually education. And so I think that uh, over the next uh, three to five years, you've got to look at the possibility of adding some of these additional four-year degree programs. You already have a university center here at Utah State for Business Administration. My uh, ambassador today, my tremendous host, Tanner, he's actually enrolled in that program because he didn't want to leave Snow College quite yet. But the majority of Snow College would remain as a, a two-year school with some select four-year degrees. And I think that as you do that, you, you, you solidify um, the, the campus base and, and you continue to grow the, the institution in a, in a responsible way. Thank you. Uh, next question. While people are thinking of their <clears throat> question, let me just uh, ask you, Dr. Peterson. For Snow College, we're here on Ephraim campus, but we are being streamed, I guess, worldwide, but I'm thinking of the, the campus in Richfield, specifically. Would you address uh, the Richfield campus and what it brings to Snow College and how you, you see it, uh, where you see its place uh, for Snow College in the future? So uh, my understanding of the Richfield campus is uh, you have about 1,100 students that are involved in technical education and some other degree programs. Uh, I think that the, it has a, a strong component for that portion of the area. I know that one of the issues is, is continuing to bring that together. I my, my hat's off to President Carlson with what he's done already to bring those campuses together, bring Ephraim and Richfield together. But I think that that's one of the things that you have to continue to do. You have to continue to work to bring those together, you've got to look at those programs which make sense for, for both campuses. And you have to look for those commonalities that are out there that you can utilize uh, to make sure that, that uh, you do bring those campuses together and to, to make make the, make both campuses work together because as a whole you're much stronger than as individuals. And so uh, I think that uh, there's been a lot of strides in that. We have to continue that. The president's going to need to spend some time on the Richfield campus uh, making sure that that are visible, that they're there, that they're shaking hands, that they're uh, understanding the issues that are there. And I know that the Richfield campus has, has expressed some interest in some housing, and uh, you know there might be some ways to do that. Uh, uh, I know there's been some work done in you know, possible increment or something like that to build a small amount of housing that goes along with the Richfield campus to help it continue to grow and to, to address the needs of the local area. Great. Thank you. Next question. Please. Hi, my name is David Allred, and I'm the chair of the English and Philosophy Department. And I was interested in hearing uh, some of your reflections about what would, what would characterize your interaction with both faculty and faculty leadership if you were in the role as president. Thank you. Well, honestly, uh, I'm a strong believer in shared governance. I've been in higher education for the last 32 years, so uh, one interaction, obviously, is with the faculty the Senate, the faculty the Senate president, uh, and uh, making sure that you are working with them, that they're uh, a voice that's heard across the campus, and then the, uh, obviously the faculty are, are they're, the, they're the, the piece of the, of the institution which makes sure the academic side happens. And so uh, I think that uh, being able to listen to faculty, to have an open door policy, if people have an issue or a question, that that, that policy is adhered to and that they have the opportunity to come in and talk to them. You know, if you, if you talk to the people that have worked with me, uh, I'm very collaborative. When you look at my leadership style, it's very participated. Um, you know, I may have been the general, in fact, I think one of the questions that I had today was, well, how will your general must not come out on campus? And, and uh, I just want you to know that in my time in the military, I was actually very collaborative as well. There were times when I had to make a decision. That is true. But uh, there still was room within that system that you could be participated, you could be collaborated, and that's what I've seen in working with faculty here is, is being collaborative in nature and working through the system and having that shared governance. And, and that holds true as well with the staff. Uh, you know, the voice of the staff is very important as well. 
uh, those two groups made this campus work and, and uh, you need to have that discussion and making sure that you're heading down the right pathway and that everybody's uh, pulling the same direction. Thank you. Next question. Please come forward. So with him coming down here, I get the option to phone a friend, right? <laughs> Mike Jorgensen, the director of government. Uh, so Val, as you're looking at becoming the president of the institution, as the president of the institution, as you well know, we're from the rural area, we always have budget shortfalls and have at times. And so we're always looking for somebody that can help with fundraising and pulling those funds from outside. As you, you look nationally, it's becoming more and more where we're having to go with the, the outside funding to do things. As a leader of the institution, what can you do to help that and bring that into our institution? Uh, you know, as far as fundraising goes, obviously there's a couple of sources for fundraising. I've always believed that fundraising is about relationships. It's about building relationships with people because people don't give money to institutions. They give people, they give money to people. And, and that holds true in a variety of different settings. One is, is the legislative session setting, and the other is with individuals who, who can donate and want to donate. Um, you know, as far as the legislative, uh, you, you've had some appropriations the last several years that have come from the legislature. I have, I have a good relationship with uh, legislators from around the state, and obviously I don't understand how the process works and, and who those people are around the table and what kind of process happens when they are making these decisions. So that would be one group and one uh, setting that I think that we, we would need to continue to work on and, and try to get funding for Snow College. The other one is from individual people, and I, I just want you to know that uh, uh, I know I, I uh, don't have the job, but uh, the other day I had a friend of mine who came up, put his arm around me, and, and uh, we were having a discussion, and uh, and then I said, you know, I'm coming president of Smith College. I'm coming to see you. And he said, well, why would you come see me? And I said, because I want you, I'm going to want you to donate to Snow College. And, uh, and he, then he said, well, I'd be open to that. You could come visit me. And so I think that you know the president of Snow College, one of their priorities has to be funded. And it's a matter of, of finding out those people. And you look around this campus, you know, there's been a lot of fundraising that's happened. I mean, you have the Amazon buildings, you've got the Huntsman Library that you're sitting in right now. You have the Eccles at the Performing Arts Center. You have to continue to work and tap on those sources. And you have to continue to build those relationships so that you can receive those type of funding. Because because you're absolutely right. Uh, more and more campuses are having to be dependent on uh, those dollars that you can raise from outside the campus and outside the traditional sources that are coming to the And so that would have to be a priority at the present as they go forward amongst the community. Thank you. Next question. Person be thinking and ready to come back too. <laughs> Thank you. General Peterson, Dan Carson, Chairman. Relative to to the growth of the campus here at Snow College, both the moments, how might your uh, military experience with strength management uh, help you uh, help us accomplish those goals of uh, practicing? Well, again, I uh, talked about this in the past. I appreciate the question about strength management because really the principles that we're using strength management really apply here as well. Uh, you know, Snow College is in a, a rural setting, so you, you've got to go out and recruit. You've got to recruit uh, one person at a time sometimes. You've got to make sure you make that contact. And, and then this morning when I was talking to your marketing and, and admissions uh, people, they told me once you get somebody to campus, 85% of them are coming. So the goal really is to get people to campus, right? I know you have to do snow blast and do some of those things. 
but you've got to pull those names of people who would be interested in coming to this campus, and then we've got to get them to campus. And, and that's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, effort sometimes. Um, and I've often said that uh, Snow College has got to recruit heavier than Utah County. I mean, the numbers are just going to be in Utah County. Utah County right now has 620,000 residents. But over the next 40 years, Utah County is going to go to 1.6 million people. And that is a part of which environment for Snow College where they need to go and recruit and bring people and, and talk about the personalized nature of the education that is here at Stone College. The residential component, the fact that they can come to campus and have that kind of personalized experience that happens at Snow. And uh, I, I really do think that Utah County, with the amount of people that are there, is, is a place that, that Snow really needs to work Thanks. Next question. Oh, that worked. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Jessica Sigrid, I'm the Director of Residence Life. So my question would be, could you tell us a little bit about your vision of what campus life at Snow College will be, including residential life, student life, and how um, your vision can help us to recruit school students, as you mentioned before? Well, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, last time I think I got asked that question, they wanted to know what activities I was going to plan. And I told them that uh, as president, I didn't see myself planning activities. But I do think that, uh, that uh, uh, student life is a huge component of what happens here. And uh, making sure that there are events and things that students can do. Obviously, you have athletics that uh, is a huge event on campus. I understand you have suit nights that are an amazing event. Uh, you've got uh, your student government that is uh, very involved. And I think it's a matter of, of taking those activities and making it a priority that, that they have the ability to plan different things on campus that they have support from the president's office to make them happen. Because students are going to know what they want to do much more than they'll ever know what they want to do. And uh, making sure that you feel empowered to, to have those types of activities and events. And so uh, I think that uh, your student government operation, your mini clubs, uh, making sure that people all have a sense of place on campus become huge as far as uh, what happens across the campus in the student life. Thank you. Next question. And I'll add to that, I think you're added that the suites has been huge on campus to helping with that whole residential side and bring uh, people to campus and make them uh, really feel the, the spirit of snow that we have here and want to do this. Want to go first? No, you go first. No, you go first. <laughs> no, really, go first. <laughs> and, and an extra one in the queue. That is great. <laughs> Rob Nelson with Care Snow. Uh, you mentioned athletics. Uh, you've done a lot with athletics and snow. And it's amazing you have someone here supporting you from your program. How do you view athletics as well as maybe theater and some of the other extracurricular activities in building and growing things? But that all ties back to the whole student life, right? Athletics, theater, the performances that you have here, uh, the fact that the different groups are able to bring into this beautiful performance hall and people that come from all around the region to, to be here and to be part of that. Um, I've been heavily involved in athletics for the last uh, several years. I would like to thank Coach Pope for driving all the way down from Utah County to, to watch me today. Um, but athletics is part of student life, and that's where you really can bring a campus together, but you can also bring the community together. And uh, I know that uh, since you got lights out on the stadium, that you just had huge attendance at your football games. I do know, for Rob, I'm talking to you today, that you're working hard to make sure you have a full schedule for next year, and I think that's a, that's a key component of, uh, of that student life and that experience that they get when they come to snow. Uh, I, myself, um, you know, I, I reflect back that some of my fondest memories were when uh, Snow and Utah Valley were in the Scenic West Athletic Conference together. And uh, my family looked forward every year to, to doing the Snow Dixie trip. And I loved coming to Snow College and uh, being right there with the players, <laughs> right there in your face, and all the community was here. And uh, you just feel that excitement that comes with uh, Snow College athletics. And uh, 
you know, one of the students that I talked to today, that still holds true. That excitement that comes, the community comes out. It's, it's a place where everybody comes together as a community and as a campus to support their athletic teams uh, as, a, as they play on the field. Thanks. Next question. Thank you. Chase Mitchell, Director of Teaching and Technology. Would you care to comment on um, whether or not you think Snow College would be a, a, a place that would be good for doing distance ed across the country, across the world, um, and compare that to what you might know, you know from your experience at UVU? Thank you, Chase. I appreciate the question. Um, Obviously, Snow College a couple of years ago got the uh, uh, mission from the legislature to do concurrent enrollment for all of the top. That was huge for Snow College. And I think that uh, as you look at the programs uh, here at Snow College, as far as, you know, Snow College is considered one of the best junior colleges in the country. There's no reason why you couldn't export uh, some of those degrees online. I mean, the world is going to online education. Uh, we just had a huge discussion yesterday about online education. You see all the players that are in the market. And uh, Snow College has got to have to have that same type of opportunity to get in the market and uh, uh, provide people with the opportunity to pick up a two year degree. Now, uh, what speed or pace you can do that as you bring a program online, as you look at it, you know, that would be something that you have to sit down and, and work through. But if you're already doing concurrent enrollment, I know you're already having some of those courses online or live interactive and going out to your to your different high school. So it's a matter of just uh, moving that out, continuing that on a much broader basis. Thanks. Next next question. Peterson is very succinct, so he's left room for many of you to ask questions. So we look forward to her. Here we go. Here comes one. I think the commissioner is telling me I can, I can tell more stories. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Olson, I'm in the business department of beach agriculture. Uh, Snow College, being in our rural setting, is often looked to 
from our community for leadership in uh, business development and uh, business growth. What's your vision of supporting and encouraging entrepreneurship uh, generally as well as rural entrepreneurship? Well, entrepreneurship, I think, is uh, one of the... Actually, let's back up a little bit. Uh, economic development is actually one of the keys for any college. And, and, uh, colleges are a place where economic development can happen, and entrepreneurship is definitely part of that. And, and you have a lot of brilliant, uh, bright minds that are here who have a lot of different ideas. I, uh, in fact, was, uh, last night I was with my daughter, and my daughter has an idea for an app, and, and she... Uh, she said, I gotta, I gotta get somebody to code this for me. And I said, well, why don't you learn to code? And then you can actually do your idea and code. And so we got into a whole discussion about the interdisciplinary nature of institutions now. That uh, um, really, you, you want people that have that coding ability. But you, know, you want to tie it to other experiences and things that they do, such as um, business or English or other things because they have these brilliant ideas, but then they need a way to be able to put it into action. And, and just let me add that uh, as far as agriculture goes, um, I grew up in a rural setting. I worked hard. I worked, uh, I did hay season. And uh, farming is one of those industries that is always looking for people that, that will have new ideas or ideas about how they can enhance what they're doing. And uh, I think that that just ties right into entrepreneurship, and, and especially when you look at uh, the marketing side of it and how they can uh, take the product to market. Thank you. Uh, next question. Yeah, please. I'm Nathan Beck, I'm the coordinator for leadership development in the Residence Life Office. Uh, a lot of what's been talked about recently, and I'm sure today in a lot of your conversations, is strategic enrollment management and like that. Um, and something that was mentioned earlier today was supporting the six county region. Uh, I'm an alum of North Sandy High School, and something that I experienced as I was getting ready to graduate was pretty much 90% of my friends just wanted to leave the county. And I was one of the only ones that was excited and passionate to come to Stone and get a degree here. Um, what would you advocate, or how would you help change the mentality of local students in the Six County Region to help them realize that Stone's a great option for them as they move forward with their educational goals? Uh, you know, I had this question. This question actually came to me today from, uh, from student government. One of the things I said to them was, one of the things they've got to do is increase their sphere of influence. They've got to talk to their uh, other friends and. and those who are involved in this, in this six county region. Those uh, students um, need to understand the spirit of snow and the, and the idea that uh, they really can get the care and the degree that they're looking for by coming to Snow College. Now, one of the things that, that's always hard is there's always that allure to go somewhere else and uh, to go to you know, somewhere bigger or different. And, and uh, so snow has to, has to reach out to those students has to work on that whole marketing discussion that I had about the one-on-one -on -one nature, the, the uh, making sure that they understand what the options are and what's available to them, and attract them to Snow College. Thank you. Um, next question. We'll have time for two or three more questions, and we'll be time to wrap up. Great. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Easton Stoffer. I'm a student here at Snow College. And I just want to ask you both back to athletics about our football program because many of the Arizona colleges have dropped their program. And I know next year we're planning to be independent, but I want to know your thoughts if you want to keep our football program after this coming year and to continue to make it a, as like an independent team or put it in and go out with our relations to other conferences. Well, you know, Stowe College has long had a wonderful tradition of football here. Uh, the program has been right nationally. That has had players who have gone on to larger programs, bigger schools, and, and performed at that higher level. Uh, I am very supportive of athletics. One of the things that I would look to is seeing what options are out there for a, a new conference. 
I know right now you've worked on an independent schedule. I can picked up three or four games that are in the Midwest. Um, but I do think that you need a longer term solution and that's going to be a conference that they can play in and that they can, can work through so that you, you don't have to worry about that schedule year in and year out. Um, and that's the security that the conference brings to you is it, it brings, one is you get, to, you get to play for championships, you get to have recognitions for your players, and you get to play against a, a set of opponents that you know that you are in the same league with. And so, uh, from my vantage point, I would be very supportive of continuing football and making sure that you find a conference that uh, works for some college. Thank you. Thanks, question. Thanks. Yes. <coughs> okay, hi, my name is Susanna Smart. I'm in the basket here. But, um, so you um, talked a lot about the spirit of snow, and that's really important to us. So I was just wondering what your um, look on the spirit of snow, what you believe the spirit of snow is? So I think that the spirit of snow is uh, the caring nature of the campus. I think it's uh, the success of your students and making sure that uh, you're saying hi to other people on the, uh, as you switch classes and that you're making sure that you have a caring act, uh, attitude and that you're inclusive in nature so that everybody feels welcome here and that they feel like they, they can be successful. So uh, when I think of the spirit of snow, that's what I think of. Um, hopefully I'm, I'm going down the right track. But uh, I do think that uh, as I've walked around campus and, and seen the exchanges between students, faculty, and staff, that you really do feel that caring attitude that is on this campus and, and wanting students to be successful day in and day out. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, actually, that was my question. Was this <laughs> but can you, you talk about can you please come to the microphone so those that are listening on the screen? Department uh, Faculty Senate Honor Program. Um, that was my question: was the spirit of snow what it is? Um, what will you do to help maintain that? So you you kind of answered the first question, but how how can you? What specific things do you think you could do to maintain that spirit of snow? I know you have, a, and I understand that you've got to keep things going financially, and you do have a good financial background. But how can you maintain that? Well, I think that that very attitude that we're talking about starts in the president's office. Uh, Having, doing the very things that we're talking about here, about having that caring attitude, about saying hi as you walk across campus, as you, uh, wanting to make sure that students are successful, that you keep open office hours so that if students have concerns or problems, that they do have that opportunity to come see the president if they need to. I think that all goes towards uh, making that happen across the campus and, and providing an environment that uh, students know that they're, they're cared about. And so uh, that attitude, I think, mean, starts right at the very top and permeates its way uh, throughout the, the organization. And so, uh, you know, I, I think it starts right here with me to start with. Thanks. Next question. Hi, please. <laughs> I'm not trying to steal the spotlight, but I did uh, get a question texted to me from uh, Bonnie Edwards, who's holding down the board in the HR office right now, so I'm passing that on from her. Uh, you had mentioned that uh, concurrent enrollment, uh, I think the word you used, have been big for Stone College. Um, uh, we also noticed that uh, you've written a couple articles on concurrent enrollment. Uh, one of them was with President Sederberg, uh, that titled, Concurrent Enrollment Don't Compromise Quality. So uh, if you could just maybe explain a little bit about um, what vision you have for concurrent enrollment and kind of what you meant by, uh, you know, when you said that you think it's been big for some college? Well, I think that uh, one is concurrent enrollment was uh, spread around with a number of different institutions, including our institution, Utah Valley University at the time. Um, and uh, there was an initiative to actually move concurrent enrollment for the rural com communities to Stone College. There was an appropriation given uh, so that the, the college could perform concurrent enrollment. And I think that it does several things. One is, is concurrent enrollment done right can, can have the same quality. It provides an uh, educational opportunity in high schools that uh, students can get some college credit before they come. And the other thing that we know from that is the fact that those students who take concurrent enrollment, that uh, they are more than likely moving on to, to get an education in a post-secondary institution. The other thing it does is that provides you a list of people that you can go out and recruit from. You know that they've already taken some college classes. And usually, 
uh, surveys show that if they will go to the institution that they've taken some of those classes from. So, so I think that concurrent enrollment does a lot of things for Stone College. It, does, it provides uh, a group of students that you can go and recruit from. It uh, provides college credit so that they get started. Now, this, this morning, one of the questions was, is, yeah, but kind of, as you take concurrent enrollment, the more concurrent enrollment you take, that's the less classes they need to take at Snow College. And that, that is true. But uh, if you don't provide that manner, if you don't help them do that, then you're not going to get them to a post-secondary uh, institution to begin with. So, so concurrent enrollment, I think, is one of the ways that you can continue to increase the enrollment at, at Snow College and also tie it to the college. Thanks. I think we have time for one more, one more question for you right now. I've asked it. <laughs> I could ask another one, but I'd like you to have a chance. Yeah, please, come on. I'm Megan White. I'm a lawyer here at the college. Um, and I just have just a general question. What are your strengths? What are you going to bring to the table at Snow College? So I, I think that uh, some of my strengths are uh, relationship building. Um, I have a, a very good understanding of the legislature. I understand the legislative process. I was the legislative liaison uh, for 10 years before I actually uh, was elected to the legislature, and so I understand that process well. Uh, I think that uh, I am a good manager. I am a good uh, collaborator. I'm somebody that uh, can bring people to the table and, and get a consensus. Uh, and so as I look at Snow College, I mean, that's one of the things that could happen is, is we can pull uh, those key individuals together and we can help, uh, we, can, we can chart that strategic direction together. I don't think that, uh, it, that I want to be the type of person who's just dictating what's going to happen. I want to have that input, I want to have that discussion, I want to, to, to get buy-in from across the campus, and I think those are some of my strengths. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let's thank Dr. Peterson for his time today. you have it, I'll, I'll repeat it. So, uh, of course, we have two more finalists we'll hear from today. We are welcoming your feedback. This is how you can provide it for us. It will be confidential. It won't be posted on the internet, but it will be read by members of my staff and then uh, shared as appropriate with members of the Board of Regents who will be interviewing along with the Executive Committee of the Snow Board of Trustees, each of the finalists tomorrow. And then we have posted a public meeting tomorrow at 5.30 in the Noise Building in Founders Hall, at which time the Board of Regents will convene to select a new president. So we invite you back for that as well. That should be a very uh, exciting event here for Snow College. It's been impressive to see the, the quality of the candidates, not only the finalists, but many candidates that the search committee reviewed before uh, recommending these finalists. And so again, we'll now take a quick break. We'll resume at uh, 3 p.m. with our next candidate.